so we just thought we'd have a bit of a chat with you and um, for the purposes of people uh, watching, just to find out a bit more about Ian and Val, about who you guys are as people, um, but also like, like why you're here, why, you, why have you come to visit us, uh, what's your role, what's it, how does it benefit us as a church, um, so that's the purpose of this conversation. Um, so let's start by asking some personal questions. Ooh, I know, personal. heart rate just went up there for a minute. <laughs> but why don't you tell us a bit about your family? Start, so I'll let Val start, start with that. Yeah, she does such a good job. <laughs> we have a wonderful family. We have four sons, two beautiful uh, daughter-in-laws, and uh, our second son. They've given us three grandkids already, and two little boys and a, and a girl, finally. Yeah. <laughs> and then our third son, Casey, and his wife, Lauren, they are expecting their, yeah. their uh, baby in October. And then we just have our youngest son get engaged yeah. to... A lovely girl, Gabrielle. So wow. they're great, and and we're so blessed. They're in our city, and they uh, they do help with church things. All of them have at some point, and so um, yeah, we really yeah. enjoy them. Yeah, they're when great. we Casey's nice. on your team, right? Casey, yeah, that's yeah. right. He uh, he works with with me on staff. So uh, since last July. So yeah, it's kind of cool working with my son, and yeah. and he's. Uh, just growing in his ability and function and just last Sunday we were gone and he preached and Ooh. carried the service so and our second right. son will preach yeah the last week when yes we're gone Russell will be preaching yeah, yeah. Addison leads worship so when we moved to the city actually to, to start the church you know we looked at it like a family business yeah and so it's kind of how we viewed it that church was a family business for us and our kids have all grown up in the church obviously and they and they love a local church so we're glad for that so yeah it's not always the case. Sometimes it doesn't work I out know, that way. It's true. Yeah, it's I'm amazed yeah. at the grace of God. Yeah. So, um, Ian, you've visited us here a few times now, and when when Ian comes over, he basically describes his role as basically he does everything in the church. He he does uh, he does uh, he basically if he if he's taken out of the church, it all falls to pieces. Nobody does anything. That's he basically right. is a one man job. A uh, so I want to know what, what, what do you do in the church? What right? do I do? Yeah, what do you, what's the do truth behind that? Yeah. Wow, I didn't recall yeah. sharing that. <laughs> Interpretation. Make us all look bad. Make it look really good. No. Um, I I'm called the the care and connections pastor. That's my title. <laughs> but uh, I, I love people. I love people. And I have always felt called and connected with Ian as a partner in, in, in ministry and in the gospel, too. So, so that was just a natural outflow, and now it's sort of official, right, that I, I get with people, and I, I love to encourage people to reach their potential. So a lot of coffees. <laughs> and and I, the other thing that I love is I love to um, help create teams, and then I love giving things away. Yeah. And so even now, our, our women's ministry, um, we, we got a team together. I helped start that and then turned that over. And so the faster that you can raise people and, and get them to a place of health and connecting and being a team yeah. and then giving them that responsibility and that authority, that's my joy. Absolutely love it. And we homeschooled our boys, so I love, I love to see people get reach their potential. So that's sort of what I do. And I, I've overseen worship, and now our oldest son is, is doing that. And, I do whatever, <laughs> all the extra stuff or anything, well, so anything they need me to do, I do. I try yeah. to try to do it. Cool. Anyway, cool. that's my role. Yeah, we really looked at it like a, it's team ministry, you know, yeah. Val and I together. Yeah. So, um, which is a pro and a con, right? It because is. on the it's one hand, it's easy. great working together. On the other hand, it's not great it's working not, together. Yeah. You know, like well, sometimes it's hard to switch off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. I was going to say, how do you find the balance between the church life, family life? Do you bring it home sometimes? What happens with, with that? Yeah. We, um, we, we do, and we have to kind of create space where we're not going to talk about right. church and we're not going to talk about stuff because it, it could be 24-7, as I think you probably know. Mm -hmm. And so you're always thinking about it, and, of course, you've got children, you've got, grand, we've got grandkids, and so, yeah, we, we try to really, like Monday's our day, our, our Sabbath. I know everyone has a different day, but for us, pretty much six days and then we really try to keep Monday as a as a sacred we're, we're, day. We're like really spiritual so we try and have like five Sabbaths 
and then two working days. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I know. Yeah. We'll have incredible. to find out your secret. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to write a book. Dele delegation's the secret. You should write a book on that. <laughs> Give it all away. Delegation. The secret of five Sabbaths. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would work. I, I would read the book. <laughs> yeah, so we try and do that. And then... Um, it's been it's been a challenge. It has been. Mm, absolutely yeah. been a challenge yeah. for yeah. sure. And and then the bit about the family and engaging because I know I don't know what you're like, Luke, but for Ian, when you get so focused, it's mm. hard sometimes to switch gears. Right. So you have to for us to still working on that. And then every season is different. Mm. But being proactive to plan, you have to plan. Yeah. Yeah. If you just let things happen spontaneously all the time, they don't. Yeah, yeah. That's what we find out. So yeah, that's, that's not good, always been yeah. easy. So often it's what not we'll, easy. we live in Calgary. <laughs> And so Calgary, Alberta is like an hour and a bit from Banff. And Banff oh, is a I'm world ten, location. Nine. Yeah, and it's yes. wonderful, right? The mountains yeah. and it's an old town and everything. Mm. So we'll, we'll often go there on a Monday and um, just get away, you yeah. know, God's Getting creation and unplug. So yeah, cool. try to. But yes, it is a challenge. Mm. So how long have you guys been um, serving, leading, working for church? Well, we... Uh, officially or unofficially? Well, or? yeah, we started off <laughs> yes, in, in our life early <laughs> days. We first were married, <coughs> early 20s. I became the youth pastor at New Hope Christian Center. So um, that was in Lethbridge. Keith Hazel actually was pastor of that church mm. at one point. Yeah. And so um, Keith and Nova, spiritual parents to us, just really love them. Um, Keith's in heaven now, of course. Yeah. But um, so I was a youth pastor then and then had... 10-year uh, blackout window where we kept serving in church uh, as, as youth workers and life group leaders volunteer, and volunteer yeah. for about 10 years and then finally uh, at age 35 got the church in Madison hat mm. and took that over and so it you know since we were early 20s but there was that they call it the 10-year blackout window in the middle where it was just different for us and um, yeah, so it's 18 years as a senior leader now. Wow. 18 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. No. So there you go. And we're still time. alive. Yeah. We're still, <laughs> it is a long time. Yeah. How did you look at that, it? That had been Ian's, Ian's dream, and, and he felt it was God's call. Like from a, a young age, God really met with him in a supernatural way when he was about 16 years old. And so, so when I met him, it was like he was, he was different than any young man I'd ever liked. Or, or known before because he's such a go-getter after the things of God and my parents loved him for that and they said this is a good guy for her so he yeah he just he always was serving the Lord in some capacity and I was too and so it just kind of was a good fit yeah. together that way so we, we, we feel when we look back you know at, at our because it, it really was God's God put us together and there's a whole story that we should share right told now. us about this story. Yeah. So God <laughs> put us together. Story. Yeah, it's it is. Story. It's a really good um, story. But, you know, he put us together for us. Yeah. I mean, he loves us and he wants us to enjoy our life. But he put us together for purpose and destiny. For and team. it's for the kingdom. Right. So yeah. we know that, that there's more than just the two of us in our life. It's yes. for the kingdom. And so that yeah. helps us. Yeah. And you would, you would feel the same way, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh, Still good. weighing that out. <laughs> it's like one long <laughs> test and try it. <laughs> Best behavior. Yeah. Stop now. <laughs> um, so, just switching um, more towards think about church stuff. Um, what what is it about church that and church life and working with people in church environment that? Um, really gets your heart pumping mm. i'll let val start uh, i as i said i think a little bit earlier too i love watching people grow and i love it when they come alive and yeah. and i particularly love it when they encounter the baptism of the holy spirit because okay. that that the flame that erupts inside of their heart and spirit, you see the difference. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a judgment. It doesn't make one a lesser Christian or, or whatever, but the power, the empowerment of yeah. God that comes, it transformed my life. I was 11 years old when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I'm passionate about the Holy Spirit in people's lives because he's the one that makes us fully become all that we're called to be. Yeah. If I yeah. can help anyone in that journey to become, to run in their call, you know, that's my passion. 
And so when I see that, and so I love to attach myself to people that want to grow, and I, and I love all of our people, and I love all the people God's put in my life, <clears throat> but I particularly, um, oh, I love walking with somebody that wants to grow. Hmm. And I just love giving them whatever I can, my time, resources, um, connecting them to people that can help them further in their journey. Yeah. I, love, I love seeing how that all fits together. So yeah. that's my greatest joy. Mm -hmm. I really well, love it. It's an old um, kind of idea now and, th and, and thought now. But <clears throat> I remember when I, was, when I was a kid, it was we, we used to be taught all the time that the key thing is, is, is how willing serve God and um, yep. it's when you find someone who is just I just want I'll do whatever I'll yes. do whatever for yeah. God like yes. that. It's, it's like finding gold in it someone is. isn't it, it yeah. is. and those are the people that yeah. really like oh. you can invest in yes. and, and and see God kind of raise them yeah. up and impart it's, it's, it's it great is. yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally and they're hungry that. and they're asking you they're not yeah. just waiting for you yeah. to you know and, I, and you do both yeah. But it's especially a joy when somebody's going, how can I grow in this? What can I do? And yeah. I'm like, huh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to do. So I love that. That's my favorite part. And, and just to chime <laughs> off on that, I, I like, uh, I enjoy seeing people too, you know, come through all the way to the start. So just recently we had, <clears throat> at Easter, we had some people share, um, you know, about, we call it from death to life, right? Mm. And so stories... Uh, life soul. stories from death yeah. to life, yeah. And so mm -hmm. we, we, we talk about the resurrection. I talk about the resurrection at the end, and of course it's Easter. But there was three stories, and it, and it just happened to be three women who talked about, in essence, they'd been with our church from pretty much the beginning. And so they talked about their journey and how mm -hmm. God had restored them and what God... And that was just so fulfilling. Like, I just sat there and thought, this is why I do this. Yeah. This is yes. why we do this. Yes. And yeah. so to me, when you say the local mm -hmm. church, like, I think... That's the picture. Yeah. You know, wherever you are, join in, whether you know a lot or a little, or yes. you, you know, like get in community and begin to change and grow. And, and if a church is healthy doing that, yes. to me it's yeah. worth it. That, that's what it's all about. Yeah. 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 And I think one of the, one of the other things that I, that I watched naturally happen for Ian and I, first of all, per, because it was our own journey, but then bringing that to people is, is seeing people come come into wholeness we are passionate about that so it's not just growing into your calling but becoming whole yes, yes, and right. we are both very passionate about that and so sometimes that happens when we're just meeting with people being being a prophetic people naturally naturally prophetic yeah. it just again that's the holy spirit piece where it just comes out of your life and he's speaking and showing you things and revelations yeah. about mm. people's hearts yeah. and where they're at and taking the brokenness and i it, it's a i love watching that especially on ian when we're together with somebody and and um i get to do it once in a while too but it's a special gift on him too he just can he just the holy spirit uses him to get to people's hearts yeah. and then to identify lies they're believing and to see captives set free yeah. And I love that. And I think if Christians get set free, the world will be saved because yeah. often we don't represent well because mm -hmm. we're still walking around in our brokenness, carrying yeah. all the baggage. Right, yeah. Yeah. And we love to see people get rid of their baggage. Mm -hmm. And then, then you run unencumbered, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that, that's the part. I just uh, want to see more of that in the church, more people doing that, right? That's great. Yeah. So we love that. Yeah, we love absolutely. that. So um, you're both great communicators. Mm. Um, I know I've heard you both myself. Uh, you haven't heard about it yet, have you? No. But I, I got I got to watch, uh, listen to you preach. When I the first time I was at the first Amp weekend, wow. and I caught the, I came in just as you were, as you were beginning. So, wow. um, so the question I want to ask you is: um, sometimes it communicates. You, you have like a a life um, message that comes out. You know, something that you keep coming back to time and time again, yeah. or something that that if. If the, that um, if you could only preach on one thing, it'd be that. Mm. You know, is there is there something at the moment that's on your heart particularly that you know, if you could only preach one time, um, again for the rest of your life, what message would you share with people? I I I know the one I would. <laughs> Good, you start. Yeah. Change. <laughs> so so um, you know, really like the passage in Second Corinthians chapter one, mm. but basically saying that the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others with the comfort we have received. So I, to me, it's a, it's a nothing is ever wasted with God passage. And what it says is, no matter whether I fail, whether it's my own weakness and failure, or whether life is brutal to me and I have much pain and difficulty, whatever it is that happens in life, if 
I allow God to comfort me. I allow God to come into that situation and heal me and restore me and, and um, care for me. Then I become a conduit of grace for others. Mm. And I think if we see that, yeah. it helps us in life. Life is full of pain. Yes. Life is full of disappointment. Yeah. We're, we're, none of us are going to escape unscathed. And so yeah. to me, the issue is, can I look at my difficulty? Mm -hmm. Can I see redemption and say, you know, God, um, I failed there. I blew it there. Um, I feel terrible. But would you come into my pain? Would you come into my failure? Would you comfort me? Would yeah. you heal me? And then out of that, when I see other people with the same failure and pain, I yeah. want to comfort them because you've given me something. That's I right. think that's, yeah. that's a level playing field for all of us. Yeah. We can all do that, right? Yeah. So that would be my, you can tell it's my life yeah. message. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you just said that because um, uh, we've been doing um, sharing values uh, once, about once a month on the stage. So things oh, that, that basically, who are, who are we as a church? We're reforming all that. And, and uh, we met with the, the new leadership team the other week and um, the first value to come out of that team was um, we called it grace full, as in mm. like we're full of grace for each other, that's as in good. that we expect really to a degree that people will mess up and people will fail. They make mistakes, they yeah. fall, but actually we're not going to kind of label people. We're going to say, well, you know what? Get back up and try again, That's and right. we're going to be a church that gives people second chances. And because we all fail, <laughs> we yeah. all mess up. We're all weak. Gosh, yeah. yeah, and when people upset us and offend us, like we have grace for those people and say, we well, you know what. Um, the goal here is to be you know, restored back into relationship. Oh, so it's good. That's, a, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That would be. I love yeah. that. Um, I I have two verses that I love, and the one, uh, Jeremiah seventeen seven and eight, is is similar to Psalm one, right? It's that that we are like trees planted by rivers of living water. Blessed is the man whose confidence is in the Lord. Yeah. And that marriage, or sorry, that verse saved my marriage. It did, because we, we actually, when we started our ministry full-time in Medicine Hat, um, I, I thought, Lord, what are you doing? Because my heart was struggling in, in the relationship. And not that he's a bad husband at all. He's a great husband. But here's what I was doing. I was putting expectation on him for my happiness and for my joy. And I didn't realize I was doing it. But, but when we do that to anyone, we're in for a downfall, right? We're in for great disappointment. And the Holy Spirit quickened that scripture to me and absolutely transformed my life. And the Lord said, Val, you need to be like that tree planted by rivers of living water. And then the Living Bible, because that's the version I was reading it, it said, reaching for the water. It was reaching for the water. And the Lord said, I want you to reach for me. I'm your source. Stop looking to Ian. Stop looking to anything else. And then it goes on to say, no matter the droughts, no matter the heat, no matter what comes, it, that tree stays green and it keeps on production producing wow. fruit, right? Producing all its luscious fruit, it said. And I was like, the lights just went on for me and Jesus said, stop. Stop looking to him to be your source or your kids yeah. mm -hmm. or, your, or yeah. your job or anything yeah. else. I am your source. And out of that, if you make me your source, you can be life in this world, no matter what's coming, right? And then the grace bit, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Um, and God is able, I love that, mm -hmm. to make all grace abound to you. Yeah. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Mm. There's nothing too hard for him. Yeah. And he can touch and do anything. And so I love bringing hope to anyone. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. That's what I would yeah. say. Because he's done it for me. That's right. good. Mm, <laughs> so, you're getting me fired up. <laughs> Get saved again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, well, we, we should shift focus more on to life things international sure. um, talk a bit about that so um, I guess with the way the way we kind of see it maybe you see different that you can explain for yourself but almost like a, like, like an apostleship like you guys are looking after a bunch of churches yeah. and um, and you're investing in those so how, how do you see the role that you, you have uh, how do you see it benefiting the local church well, you know, obviously in the fall, I've been, you know, walking this year with Dave Wells, co-leading, and then in October, I'll be set in as, as the, uh, the team leader, and really, that's the essence of it, be the team leader, and I think as LifeLinks continues to grow, we're going to see, you know, more and more people God raise up in, in different spheres, in different areas, and so my role is to stay connected with those folks and to be... Um, you know, that leader. Like right now, uh, our team, we have an executive team, 
and we have four key areas that our network is focused on. So one is church development, leader development, leadership development, missions development, and then network development. So network development's like church planting, communications, right? Uh, church development is uh, the pastors retreats we have, especially in North America, and, uh, and connections we have between churches and oversight. And, and then leadership development, AMP. You're part of the accelerated yeah. ministry preparation, mm -hmm. part of AMP, that's our network school. And so that's part of it, along with other tools we're developing for churches. And then of course, missions development. We have churches in India, Uganda, different parts of the world. So those four areas, we, our goal is to have leaders overseeing those four areas. And then me as a team leader, I will work with those leaders and I'll also obviously have influence on those areas as well. So that's, that's the role that, that, that I'm heading into. And, you know, it's fluid. It's developing. Mm -hmm. We're growing the network. I mean, even here in the UK right now, Val and I are, are connected here. And we'll be having a meeting mm -hmm. tomorrow with the UK yeah. leaders. And that's just to facilitate uh, God to do something here mm -hmm. uh, fresh and, and something new to, to rise up here in the UK. And which will be connected with us in North America. And so those are the kinds of things that we're doing now, along with working with local churches that we have and, and you know, walking with those leaders. And we really see ourselves as a pastor of pastors. Yes, we, right. we, we, we see good. that more that's and good. more, right? We want to, really you know, because often as, as shepherds, you know, mm. we're, you know, we know even our own church, mm. like, you know, it's hard to always talk with other people and who do you talk to right, and yeah. who's kind of looking yeah. out for you and you're always yeah. looking out for others and so we just say hey if we can come alongside people yeah. and kind of be yeah. be be the pastor there and yeah. shepherd them yeah i hope that helps that's kind yeah, of that's great yeah. and um one thing i'd say mm. that that your role adds to the church is it, it brings a sense of security Good. and safety yeah. because yeah. the church recognized that there's there's someone an outside person who is inputting into the leadership um, and help, helping them on their journey, yes. you know, and helping them formulate things mm -hmm. in their mind yeah. and how to go about things, and it's there as a resource to go to for advice. Mm -hmm. And at times, you know, we have to make ourselves accountable at times to say, "Hey, what are you doing?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, it brings it brings a security to know that. And, and obviously, at the local church, they have their own leadership in place that also do that. But it's good to have an outside voice. Yeah. It's good to be part of a bigger picture as well. It is. So for us, it's nice to know that there are other life things churches, mm -hmm. and it's good to know that there are other other churches near, you know, fairly nearby that would would jump yes. on jump in, the, yes. in a car That's and true. drive over yeah. if, if yeah. needs yeah. be. And yeah. we've even in the last six months had some of those guys uh, speak and awesome. uh, want to plan some more of those those That's as well. Good. So it's well, good. That's really and, good. And I think here in the UK, and and especially actually in your area. You know, I think about um, the fact that now, you know, the church in Stoke, Stafford, you folks here, yeah. within not too far, you, you've got three LifeLinks churches mm -hmm. that are, uh, you know, and, and relationships are being built. So I think that's just a highly positive. One of the things that we always make people aware of and make sure people know is that when LifeLinks leaders come into a church, we come in on the invitation of the yeah, church. Yeah. This is not a top-down controlling right. yeah. kind of situation. Right, yeah. This yeah. is, we walk with you relationally yeah. and you it's invite good. us in, right? Like you and I have a good relationship yeah. and we've been talking and it's because you have welcomed me in to, you know, you ask me questions and you brought, mm -hmm. you know, which mm -hmm. I appreciate and we're able to walk together, right? Both of you yeah. are are, are just open that way. And I think that's just normal. I mean, we all, we all need to be actually helping each other all the time, Absolutely. you know? So yeah. I, I've been watching you, Luke, and what you're doing here. I mean, you know, I take notes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing here? Oh, oh, let's because I'm, I'm like, that's a great idea. Yeah. It's a brilliant idea. So, you know, I think that's how we all get better. That's yeah. right. That's good. That's, good. Yeah. that's really good. Well, um, I just want to say on behalf of us that we, we love you guys and we think you're brilliant and right. we love that you you know we'll jump on a on a plane and come over here and spend some time with <laughs> us and, it and uh, it's it been it's, a, it's a real privilege to to get to know you guys Thanks for having us. and uh, we appreciate you so